Okay, so in this segment, we're going to explore uh, another really important aspect to managing our computer, which is learning about services. Um, and so to get us started off in this section, I, I always like to have a few uh, kind of informal tips or informal list of rules here that we should always consider when we're when we're exploring services, especially for the first time. So here, here's kind of my informal list that I'd like to kind of run through. Um, the first is just what does the service do? And a lot of this is uh, uh, what I've noticed from new students, especially is that they hear about something, they learn about this new service, and then they immediately run off and start clicking buttons and start running commands. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How about you just take a step back when, especially when we're learning for the first time and, you know, may maybe read a little bit of information off a website, maybe watch a little video first, try to understand just what is the purpose and the nature and the essence of a service or of something. And that, that five minutes worth of background information can go a really long way when you want to understand the big picture of everything. So definitely worth the time. And I see far too many people skip over that. Um, one of the first services, of course, we're gonna take a look at is managing our networking service. And you know that's a good example of one in the sense that most college programs, we have entire network classes dedicated to, you know, even just scratching the surface of what does it take to understand networking. So that would be a good example of something of, you know, there's a lot of background information that would be necessary so that you can take all the context uh, of, of the rules and the commands and the definitions and whatever it is that you're you're looking to do and you know be successful with your efforts so anyways take a step back before you rush off and just start clicking buttons and say let, let me let me take a little break here and read with things um, i've also seen some teams of people do this really well together like you have two people go and spend five minutes each to just go look over some resources and then they have like a five minute brain meld sharing session like hey this is what i got from it those this far what are you getting from it which is really useful under a competition because it's very likely you're going to get services thrown at you that you've never seen before um, the other uh, uh, step that I oftentimes uh, uh, tell people to kind of challenge as they're going through in the head, kind of a mental checklist here, if you will, um, is uh, that the, a lot of these services in Linux, they usually have configuration files somewhere. So uh, where are they? You know, where are the configuration files for this particular service? And I do want to emphasize that files is plural. Some, some, yeah, it's true. Some services, they're really managed from one configuration file, and that's really all that you need to know. But certainly more of the complex services, they usually have multiple configuration files that all work together, and they're not necessarily in the same place, right? So maybe you have one main folder inside slash etc that has a majority of the configuration files, but you might have some more user-specific ones elsewhere on the computer um, or that might that they might affect other settings beyond the base server type configuration so again these are other things you want to go to the internet and try to learn a little bit more about is okay what are the main configuration files but what are maybe some of the less obvious configuration files as well and how do I deal with them? Uh, especially as you're going into these main configuration files and trying to get your services working or trying to fix something that, that has, uh, has, has been the victim of an attack, um, I oftentimes emphasize this is the one of the best places where we can employ our basic fundamental cybersecurity practice of making backups, right? So having a copy of our important configuration files, this is one of the things I absolutely would be prioritizing. Do you have a copy of your configuration files or not? Um, especially, uh, uh, even when you start out, you know, before the before the system's even been brought online to be destroyed and attacked by an offensive force, I mean, just think about it from the perspective of you're going into a configuration file that you've never seen before. Do you think you're going to do everything correctly the first time? And and why 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 would you think that? What makes you think you're going to be right the first time? So yeah, sometimes you want to be able to go back go back in and reference. Okay, this is what it started as. I think my changes have kind of horribly screwed things up. Maybe I just kind of want to go back to how it was and be able to get it. Um, this would uh, be another good thing to uh, just try to try to look up online. Try to look up online. Does is there any resource online that has kind of a cookie cutter template? This is a good place to start your configuration in, and then you just have to sort of fill in some of the blanks. So yeah, there's a lot of resources out there that that can do that to get you started. Um, I definitely would be careful bringing in someone else's configuration file because you really got to be careful about well how many things were unique to their environment and it's not appropriate to do on your environment but a lot of that kind of comes back into my tip number one which is you know learn about what the service does you 
you got to learn what types of settings and configurations are appropriate for you. And, you know, a lot of that comes with time and experience. And of course, that's that's why we're trying things like the competition. So and then finally, this is a, a, a really common th- a tip that, again, for new people, I've seen a lot of a lot of fail going on here is they go into the configuration files. They were, you know, putting their minds together as a team to figure out how to get some particular service working. They did the changes according to the website and things are still not working and they're sitting there scratching their head thinking they did something wrong well certainly many services in order for your changes to take effect you have to learn how to restart the service so always have that kind of as your mentality of okay i'm going to make some changes to the configuration file and now i'm going to go through and restart the service do i have to make some more changes restart the service like it's, it's kind of a good thing to keep in mind um, I also emphasize to learn how to restart the service, not learn how to just hit the restart button on the computer every single time. Like, yeah, restarting the server, of course, will restart all the services too. Um, but the, the the downside to that is that in a production environment, many times our hardware, of course, might be handling multiple servers. And so you might make a change to one server. And if you restart the entire computer, it's like, well, that that's not good practice. You just restarted access to whoever else might have been working on that server and all the other services now go down because of that. So it's not always practical to just say, well, I'll just restart the computer every time. Sometimes that works in a competition, but it, it, it certainly takes longer and it, it's definitely not a good technique. You want to learn how do I properly restart a service? And again, the internet can be very resourceful when it comes to doing that. Like this is how you properly restart the service for these types of changes. These are the changes that don't require a restart. These are the changes that do require a restart, right? That's definitely something good to know. And uh, beyond that, many times as you can get more complex, you know, the services start relying on other services. And so if you make a change to one service, it might actually require that you make a change to the other service as well. Or maybe you have to restart that service as well before your your change actually cascades across all across the entire server. So, again, pay attention to things like that. What services are relying on each other? And when you break one or when you mess with one, how is it going to affect the other things that are upstream or downstream of that particular service? And then maybe just the final last tip would be, you know, can you actually tell is the service on or off right now? All right, that that's definitely something I've seen a lot of where uh, you know people go and they try to turn on the uh, they turn on their servers and you know they they think oh look I've got a website and I've got all the configuration and everything should be working right and it's just you know somebody kicked out the plug and they turned off the service and the service never got started in the first place so let alone from a restart we definitely want to pay attention to is the service actually running by default or or is it off so anyways this is a good set of tips to kind of start with we'll keep these things in mind and I'll reference back to them a few times here as we continue to take on what are some of the services that that we're going to have to start at least get a crash course in here uh, to be ready for our competitions.